Are you having a problem in your dating or relationship life and you need a question answered? Well, go to my website. The link is in the podcast description and you'll see how you can ask Yaz a question and get it answered confidentially. So go to the podcast description and look for the link where it talks about how Yaz will answer your question. Hi, you guys. It's Yaz. Good morning. Today, I'm going to podcast on a topic that's really, really common that a lot of people are struggling with, okay? She writes, how do you move on from someone you still love? It's been six months since we've broken up and it still hurts like the first day. I never really struggle with moving on from past relationships until now and it's getting worse each day. It didn't help that I also lost a family member at the same time and worked 60 hours. Being overwhelmed, I moved to a new city and took a mental break for two months. Now I find myself crying almost every night, losing sleep and motivation, interest for everything. I'm sure I hit depression at this point. What can I do? Okay, this this is like heartbreak city, all right? She, um... She's still grieving over her ex, all right? The thing the thing that I want to bring up, you guys, that a lot of people struggle with is that they're sitting there and they're saying to themselves, how do I, you know, move on from someone you still love? Well, the thing is this, you guys, you have to understand what love is. A lot of people break up with somebody and they say, oh, but I still love him, okay? Or other people in other situations are in abusive relationships and the person abuses them could be mentally, physically, every which way, and they sit there and they say, but I love him or I love her. It could go the other way too, right? But the thing is, do you know what love is? Love is somebody who's kind, somebody who's willing to work with you, Somebody who 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 loves you back and and gives you that that love back. You have to understand when you break up, you break up for a reason, okay? And what a lot of people and especially a lot of women, they look back on their past relationships and they say to themselves, you know, they're still grieving over it. They're still grieving over it. Now I'm not saying that you shouldn't get through that grieving period, but what you need to do is you need to come to the realization that there's a reason you broke up, okay? If that person was so wonderful, was so great, was so worthy of your love, you would still be with them, okay? You would still be with them most of the time. So instead of looking at all the things you loved about the person, things about, think about all the reasons you broke up with the person. Stop glamorizing and falling back on that person like they were something super spectacular. The reason that you're feeling this way is because you're empty in your life. You're feeling a void in your life. See, when you feel a void in your life, that's when you become vulnerable. That's when people have control over you and control over your emotions because you're feeling a void. Maybe you're feeling lonely. Maybe you're feeling depressed. Maybe there's nothing exciting going on in your life. Maybe you've tried to meet other people and they're just not doing it for you. And you're falling back on your exes. Just because, you know, your ex filled a certain void in your life, it doesn't mean that your ex was right for you or that you loved them, okay? It could be that you were codependent on them to fill you up with happiness, that even though your past relationship had a lot of bad in it, there were times in there 
that made you happy. And right now, you're not feeling any happiness. So you're hanging on. You're clinging on to the past relationship because you're, you, you're romanticizing and thinking about the good times, okay? The oxytocin that took up your brain and gave you that, that good feeling that you had, that's what you're holding on to because you are feeling empty in your life right now. Now, in her case, this girl needs to really go into therapy if she's at this point. She needs to talk to somebody um, and get professional help and speak to a therapist if she's falling into depression because depression is no joke, all right? Depression will paralyze you. Okay, in the sense that when people get into deep depressions, they end up in bed and can't even get out of bed all day. Okay, it, you know, it's a very dangerous state of mind to be in when you're in that kind of um, deep, deep depression and you need, you know, professional therapy. The other thing that you need is you need you need a support system. You need lots of people that you can depend on, friends, family. You need to talk to other people, join groups, get involved, keep busy. Although she's keeping busy, she still has that void going on. But I'm going to explain it to you guys, all right? I'm going to explain it to you guys. How do I know? Because I've been in that place. I know what it is. And I know what it is to take yourself out of that place, you got to you know how you take that self out of how you take yourself out of that place? It takes time. It takes, you know, a level of maturity in thinking and it takes coming to a mental realization of what that person was to you, okay? A lot of t- times people break up with somebody and they don't see that person for who they really were, okay? They're looking at themselves and they're saying to themselves, but I don't understand. Why didn't this person want me? You know, I did everything for them. I was there for them in their lowest times and they still turned their back on me and walked out on me. Okay? Because what you don't understand is that the problem wasn't all times or necessarily you. The problem was the person that you were involved with. That person could have been narcissistic. That person could have been selfish and not willing to give to the relationship. That person could have been a player. That person could have been somebody who doesn't know how to be in a healthy relationship. That could be a person who doesn't know how to give, okay? You know, I see in the groups all the time, this gets me crazy, all right? Because I see in the groups all the time, so many people talk about, oh, well, you know, you need to look for somebody with a good personality, okay? Somebody with a good personality. No, you need to look for somebody with a good heart. You need to look for somebody that if you get involved with them, that person is dependable, reliable, trustworthy, you know, somebody who gives to the relationship, okay? You know, somebody who's able to sacrifice in a relationship. That is, that, you guys, that is the key. Listen to me when I tell you. I've lived enough life. I've been in enough relationships. I've been married. I've been divorced. You know, I I earned my stripes, baby. And I will tell you that one of the most important things One of the most important things is having somebody who will sacrifice for you, okay? Somebody who is not selfish. Somebody who doesn't let other people influence them. Somebody who is their own man and woman, okay? And knows that life isn't always a a party, knows that life isn't always fun, that you are going to have your hard times. And that person's not going to bail in the hard times because they value you, okay? They value you, you know? A lot of times people leave or whatever 
and they think the grass is greener and then they realize that it's not so green and they come back to you. But you know what you got there? You got somebody who's not mature enough to understand what a real healthy relationship means, okay? That's why I'm telling you, you want somebody, if you get in a relationship with somebody and you're looking for a long-term relationship, you want somebody who understands what a real relationship means. Ride or die, baby. And that means that th you're going to have your bad times, okay? Because that's just part of life. You know, you're going to have times where you may have troubles with your children. You may have troubles financially. You may have troubles, you know, where there's people trying to interfere in your relationship. Okay? But you need a ride or die standalone person that knows what it is and who wants to be in a relationship. Okay? Not that you got to beg them to be in a relationship or you got to sit there and do everything, drive yourself crazy. You know, you got to feel like you got to look like a supermodel 24 hours a day. That doesn't always work in real life, okay? In real life, not everybody is looking like they are on Instagram, okay? Not especially, just throw a couple of kids in there, all right? Nobody's got time to sit there uh, in a beauty parlor for four hours or sit there in a gym for, you know, four hours, okay? We're talking real life, real life. What's important? What's important to that person or what's important to you, whether it's moving on, whether it's having a family, whether it's moving in your career? You know, you can't in life, okay, in, in life, you can't have it all in certain situations. And I'm going to tell you what I mean by that. Like, for instance, if you're a parent and you have kids, okay, and you want a high-powered career, you cannot give to your kids everything that you could give to them when you're in a high-powered career, okay? Yes, you could give them money. Yes, you can get a nanny, and you could do all those things, but what you can't give them is you can't give them your time, okay? You can't give them your time, all right? Like you take these celebrities, you know, I, you know I'll just throw out Kim Kardashian, for instance, all right? She's got four kids, four kids, okay? And then she wanted to go to law school, and she's got all these uh, business ventures going on and everything like that. Well, when you have all these things going on and, you know, a lot of these celebrities, you know, they have children and they have busy careers, um, you know, there's just so much you can give to your kids time wise, time wise, because you can't be everywhere for everybody. OK, you just can't do it. Believe me when I tell you, I have three kids and I know what it is and I have a special needs child, all right? And it's very difficult to be everywhere for everybody. So the point I'm trying to make is something's got to give. And like in Kim Kardashian, you know, I was amazed at one of their last episodes where she really broke down. You know, I have to say, she really became transparent and she really broke down and she was talking about how she couldn't, you know moved to Wyoming where Kanye was. And that was maybe one of the reasons. I'm sure it wasn't the only reason they broke up. Okay. But the thing is, you can't have it all. You've got to make a decision. And the reason that I'm bringing all this up, you guys, is that when you get together with a partner, you've got to be on the same page, on the same path. And it doesn't matter. You know, people sit there and they say, oh, well, if celebrities can't, you know, make it, then how can we make it? What What makes a celebrity any more, you know, more, they would know more than anybody else. Why? Because they're successful in their career. That doesn't mean they're successful in their love life. Okay. They make poor decisions in their love lives all the time. They pick the wrong people. They may get together with people because it's like a, you know, it's a publicity thing too. It's a status thing to get together with another, um, you know, famous person or whatever. They see them and the person's giving them a lot of attention, but they're not, they're not diving deep. 
This is what I'm talking about, you guys. You got to dive deep and look into that person and see if you are on the same page. Do you want the same things in life? Do you have the same values and morals? Do you know what it means to sacrifice? Okay? You know, this is what I'm talking about. This is what I'm talking about. And this is why so many people end up on the short end of the stick. Okay? Or shall I say the wrong end of the stick? Because, because they are misguided and they they got involved with somebody who they thought was nice. You know, they thought, you know, in the beginning they were nice and, you know, they got along well and everything like that. But what they didn't realize that maybe they didn't have somebody who knows what it is to stick it out. Okay? That is willing to commit. You know, when we say commitment, there's commitment and there's commitment. Okay? There's people that will be committed and will ride out the bad times. And there will there's people that will say, eh, I'm out of here. Eh, I'm out of here. And there's so much available on, you know, with all the options on social media. Not that I'm telling you to stay in a committed relationship, okay? If somebody is clearly, clearly breaking your boundaries, okay? Then, you know, that's a recipe for disaster. But in, you know, you have to be very, you know, transparent and communicate with somebody in the very beginning as to what you which path you're going okay and you have to see if that person's on the same path and it's not what comes out of their mouth stop listening to what comes out of their mouth okay people will say whatever you know just to you know shut you up sometimes or, you know, because they want to keep you around for other benefits or whatever, you got to look at that person's actions. You got to look at that person's patterns, okay? How do they treat you? That's one of the most important things. How do they treat you and are they willing to sacrifice, okay? So remember this, you guys, all right? You know, I'm feeling very inspirational this morning because I saw this and I said, oh, Another one, another one, okay? Another broken heart, another person grieving over an ex. Have I grieved over ex? Sure I have. Yes, I did. Many a times I did, okay? And and in some cases, I grieved over someone who was a piece of shit. A piece of shit, you guys. Believe me when I tell you, this person treated me poorly in every way. And people would say, what are you, crazy to grieve over that? I've had guy friends tell me, you ought to kiss the ground you got rid of him, okay? And yet, at the time, I didn't see him for who he really was. And at the time, I was at a vulnerable place in my life. Okay, and this is what I'm trying to get through to you guys. When you are in a vulnerable place in your life, these type of things are going to affect you deeply. Okay, and that's why when I go on my podcast and I may preach a little bit because I'm trying to save you. Okay, I'm trying to save you from what I went through because nobody should have to go through some of the things that I went through, okay? And that was one of the reasons I started this podcast, okay? It wasn't just to become a podcaster. It was because I saw what was going on in the dating world, and I said to myself, it's not right. People have to be aware of these things because they're not being taught that there's game out there. And, you know, there's a lot of good people that are getting hurt emotionally. And take this girl, for instance. Now, this girl is falling into a depression, okay? And nobody deserves to be treated like that, okay? So th the point is this, you guys. The most important thing, you know, when you're sitting there and you're, you're trying to figure it all out, right? And you're saying to yourself, how do you move on from someone you still love? You realize that, you know what? It was, you know, 
it wasn't a real love that you thought it was, okay? Because real love takes time. Real love is when you both are willing to give each other to each other, okay? I'm very spiritual in that manner, you guys, all right? You know, I really believe, okay, everybody has their own belief system, but I really believe that, you know what, you come together as one and you sacrifice for each other and it's a, it's a commitment, it's a total commitment and you don't let any outside influences or outside people change that commitment that you have to each other, Okay. And that's the problem. A lot of people are in relationships with people who are not truly committed to them, okay? And why is that? That is because of selfishness, okay? Selfishness. You know, the me society, not the we society. It's all about me, okay? So you got to come to that mental realization and realize that, you know what? It was good that I broke up because it's part of my growth and it makes me a stronger person. And even though I've made my mistakes like everybody else in this world, everybody makes mistakes. Anybody who tells you they don't is, is you know, flat out lying to you. We're all human. We all make mistakes. We grow from these mistakes. Okay. And it, you know, that saying what doesn't kill us only makes us stronger. Okay. Okay. And that's where you come into your own. And this is what I'm telling you. This is why I tell you guys, never be codependent on anyone else for anything, okay? Not for money, not for your happiness, not for anything. You've got to be, you know, you've got to, you got to feel whole within yourself, okay? And then when you get involved with somebody, that person adds to you and, and, you know, gives you that full completeness, all right? But if it breaks up, you're not devastated because you got your self-worth, okay? You got your self-worth. That today or tomorrow, something happens in your relationship. Today or tomorrow, something happens in your marriage. You know what? You got you, okay? And that's what it's about. So this girl needs to get some therapy, I hope you guys, you know, like the podcast. If you do, please subscribe and please share, share, share to your friends. And maybe it could help some people out there. Thank you. Have a good day. I want to tell you guys about a great book that I highly recommend. It's a book called Are You the One for Me by Barbara DeAngelis. Barbara DeAngelis is a New York Times bestselling author. She's got a lot of books, you guys, on Amazon, and you can listen to it free through Audible's 30-day trial, 30-day free trial. It doesn't cost you anything. And in her book, she talks about, you know, if you're married and you're wondering if you could be happier, if you're single and wondering how to avoid another wrong partner, or you're wondering if the person you're with is the one for you. This book is so spot on. I got this book years ago. A friend recommended it to me because let's face it, when we're growing up, nobody tells us these things, right? So we learn through years of experience and this book sums up so much and is so relevant to relationships and getting to know what somebody is about, how to avoid making the mistakes that we make, the six essential qualities to look for in a mate how to spot fatal flaws in a partner, how to create that sexual chemistry you want. So go to Audible and you can look, you can go to my link, which is tinyurl.com slash askyaznow, okay? And you have 30 days to get a free audiobook. You can cancel any time. And on top of that, you guys, there's other books on there too. There's other books that she's written, like What Women Want Men to Know, uh, The Secrets About Men Every Woman Should Know. So go to the link tinyurl.com backslash Now and get your free trial membership.